Crouching and going prone have always given recoil benefits in EFT, but today we're going to find out exactly how much. Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here, and in case you doubt this, on screen we have a 93 recoil Scar L with M855 ammo, firing two round bursts from a standing position, which looks like this, from crouched, which looks like this, and the prone position, which looks like this. As you can probably see, the difference between these tests is really extraordinary, in fact way more than I thought it was going to be before starting. In the case of the scar here, just eyeballing it, but the reduction seems to be about one third from standing to crouched, and half again from crouched to prone, or two thirds less than standing, whichever way you want to think about it. But from the research that we have done previously, we know that the recoil system is a bit odd these days post 12.12. The reduction for stances almost certainly works on a percentage basis over the recoil of the entire weapon, but there is a rule of thumb that I have been using ever since the round recoil investigation where it seems that you have to add 20 recoil to all the guns from what it says in their stats. I've gone into great detail in the past as to why this is roughly correct for our practical purposes and I'll link that video at the end, but for now let's just go with it as it does seem to work here quite well. It would be nice and neat if the reduction was 33% for crouching and 66% for prone, and using my theoretical recoil calculation this would mean that we would need to use a recoil of 93 when crouched to get back to 55 equivalent when standing. Here we have the 93 recoil scar standing, the 93 crouched, and finally a 56 recoil scar whilst standing as well. This seems to work pretty well as the two are basically equivalent, but we can't test it for prone because you can't make a scar with low enough overall recoil to test against the standing version as it would need to be really, really low. So at this point we have to switch over to the AKM. The AKM works well for this kind of test because a stockless version can go all the way up to 189 recoil, but we can also get them down into the 40s. Redoing the first experiment, 189 recoil works out equivalent to around 119 crouched and prone to about 50 if the theory is going to be correct. So first off we show the 189 AKM recoil standing followed by crouched with the same weapon. A few points here and there doesn't really matter so we compare this one with a 121 recoil AKM while standing as well. These are pretty much the same pattern, and although you could possibly argue that the 121 recoil is slightly lower, we just want to get an idea of what this might be and that it works at both ends of the recoil spectrum. Next we fire up our 189 recoil version from prone this time and grab ourselves a 50 recoil AKM which we use from standing. This also appears to work very well with our original 1 3rd 2 thirds theory. Looking at two round bursts is usually the best way to get a read on pure recoil, but as we have the same weapon, we also have the same PMC auto control stat, which means that full auto should look the same for both as well. Going back to crouched with the 189 AKM, oh yeah, the recoil is pretty bad on this guy. Getting a little bit closer, the patterns for this versus the 121 AKM is very similar, which is what we set out to show. There is clearly some randomness in the way that these function, so a broad match is all we can really get out of this, especially at over 150 recoil. Moving on, here is the same test with the prone 189 AKM versus the 50 from standing. This looks pretty good to me. It's amazing how you can make a terrible weapon with no stock perform equivalently to a pretty decent one just by lying down. So, what we've learned so far is that recoil improvements from crouching and prone do seem to follow the pattern of 33% from standing to crouched and 66% from standing to prone. The tests match this within a reasonable error and practically speaking it doesn't really matter for players whether it's 33% or 30%, the broad concept is the most important part here. However, I wanted to have a go at the low end of recoil too because this is sometimes where these theories can get a bit funky. So we take the lowest recoil weapon in the game that can go full auto, which is the 9mm vector, and we compare two vectors against each other. The minimum recoil for this weapon is 20, and reverse engineering the recoil that we would need to compare it to a crouched version gets us to 40 recoil. Fortunately, it is possible to make a vector with 40 recoil, even if it looks a little bit cursed. Getting started with the testing on this one with the 2 round burst, ah yes, the recoil on the vector is too low this time, not the most useful test that we've ever done. Standing back a little bit this time, we can properly check the difference between the two. Again, you could argue that it's slightly low, but for the purposes of what we're looking at, it's good enough. Rounding off our experiment with a full auto from each weapon gives a good result, and enough for me to sufficiently decide that we have the practical information that we were looking for. 
For a fun bit of theory crafting, to get the same recoil whilst prone versus the standing 20 recoil vector, by my calculations, you'd need a vector with 100 recoil. But the base gun only has 48 recoil to start with, and that's with zero mods, so we won't be doing that one. All of this got me thinking, what is the lowest practical recoil that you could possibly achieve in the game whilst full auto? For me, it's a tie-up between the 9mm Vector at 20 recoil with green tracer that gives a reduction of another 6, and the lowest recoil AK-74N with 30 recoil with US ammo which gives another 25. At this level of recoil, there's something else going on to calculate it, as even my rule of thumb stops working properly, i.e. you'd end up with a negative recoil unless you clamp the parameters in some way, which I'm just not privy to. But that aside, this spot on customs is around 100 meters from our target wall, and using both of these weapons on a two round burst shows that they're actually very close in performance. The 9mm vector does just about take the crown, but it's not far off. If we fire this in full auto as well, we also have to remember that the fire rate of the 9mm vector is way higher than that of the AK at 950 versus 650 RPM, so the performance is even more impressive from the vector when you look at the final result. If you want to find out more about the round recoil modifiers and my reasons behind the rule of thumb calculations that I use, check out this one. As usual, a big shout out to all my patrons who help make all of this possible. Hit all of the buttons if you enjoyed today's video and as always, have fun in your raids.